Hello there, and welcome to RPG Tips again. It's been around two years, I think, since I did my How I Play My Games video, in which I showed you my different solutions of playing both on the computer and on the go. And since then, I must admit that things have changed a bit, and some of the solutions that I showed you have become either obsolete or they didn't really take off that much. So now, two years after that, I want to show you how I play my games in 2021. It's not going to change that much. I'm still using Markdown and I'm still using my RStudio library. In this video I'm going to show you how to play at the computer because that's mostly how I do it nowadays. And I'm going to focus on two pieces of software that have basically solved almost all of my needs when playing. Now to give you an idea of why these solutions work for me, I'm going to give you a brief overview of things that I have used previously, and I'm going to detail what things I need when I'm playing solo. So let's see, I arrived at solo role-playing through normal GMing, and for that I was using first Microsoft OneNote, which is very very good, and then I moved to Realmworks, a product by Lone Wolf Development, I think it's called, which is a complete solution for world building and organizing sessions and revealing content to players. It has also maps, fog of war, auto-linking things. In short, it is, it is very good, but it has some problems. First of all, it's a paid solution that needs to have a subscription for syncing between computers. Then it also has been slightly abandoned the development is not complete. I mean, I mean, it is a complete product. You can use it and it is very good. But there are no more new features coming. It's a very nice product, but it's a bit rough around the edges in its current state. Uh, exporting and importing things is hard. There is no dark mode, which is something very stupid, but nowadays almost every software has it. And most importantly for me, it's only available in Windows. So no mobile solution and no playing in Mac, which is how I do it. So for a long time I was searching for another solution, uh, both for my normal GMing and for solo playing. And this is where I moved to what things do I look for in a solution for solo playing. Well, I think I need wiki capabilities. My worlds and my threads and my adventures tend to grow quite a lot, especially if I'm GMing, but also in my solo games. So I need ways to categorize and catalog everything that I see and find to be able to have them then in my mythic lists because if not, I'm, I'm going to basically forget about them. Then I really value the possibility of using Markdown, because I can sync it through any device, basically, because it's plain text. And then there are two bonuses. The first one is, well, that the software looks nice. It is not a real requirement, but every, everything that draws us out of the game that we can avoid is good. And if we can play in an environment that looks, well, appropriate to the game that we're playing, then that's going to be a bonus. And my second bonus is if I'm able to use all of my generator suite in that same software without having to go to a separate software. And well, playing in my computer, I've basically got a setup that satisfies all of those requirements and bonuses that I just mentioned. In short, if you don't want to listen to anything else I have to say, they are a combination of Obsidian for note taking and Espanso for uh, scripting. In case you want to see more, I'm going now to share my screen and show you a bit of how I do it. I'm not going to make a deep tutorial about how to use neither Obsidian nor Espanso, but if you're interested in having more information about how I structure my games or how to do the scripts, the best thing you can do is drop by the Mythic GME Discord server, which you'll have a link on the description, and there I'll be extremely happy to help you with anything that you need. It's just that if I do a technical tutorial, this video will be probably 30 minutes long, and I don't want that. Just before I get into the screen sharing, because I haven't mentioned it, Obsidian is a note-taking app that is just a wrapper over an existing folder of Markdown files. So your things are free to go wherever you want. So even if Obsidian explodes tomorrow, which it won't, you'll still have all of your information ready to be synced or shared to any device that you want. But Obsidian makes it extremely easy and convenient to, well, play solo with just a bunch of markdown files through some of the reasons that I'm going to show you now. So here we are, this is what's called a vault, uh, basically a collection of, of markdown files in Obsidian, and this is the vault that I've done for Stories of Bardoba, my, my YouTube actual play, and here you can start to see, well, what I think that's the most important thing that Obsidian has, which is linking, linking between files. Um, here for instance I have Vesna's article, and if I hover over it I get a pop-up showing me 
uh, some of the contents of this node. I can also go to this node. Here's Fesna with all of his attributes, stats, skills. Of course, this is just pure markdown, as you can see. This is just text that I've written. But when it's compiled, it looks like this, and it looks quite nice. This is not a default look of Obsidian. That's also one of the bonuses that I mentioned previously. Obsidian just renders markdown through CSS. So it has lots of predefined themes, but if you just spend a bit of time noodling, as I've done here, you can change the fonts, the colors, this bar that looks like Dungeons and Dragons, which I actually took from, from another theme from, from a guy from Discord. And in general, it's extremely easy to customize. So if you're playing a fantasy game, like I'm playing here in Bardoba, you can make it look like a fantasy book. And if you're playing something futuristic, there are also lots of themes that will allow you to have that sort of terminal matrix look, so that even the tool you're using to play draws you in the game. If we go back now to my start here note, uh, let's go to the first episode. Here you can also see that I document the notes with a setting, uh, what happens in the game, and more links to whatever appears in this session. For instance, here we can, we can go to Whitebridge with its story, the interesting locations, my generation notes, and this makes it very easy also for me to basically navigate a whole wiki of knowledge created just from my games. And in fact, Obsidian has, well, lots of features that I'm not showing you. For instance, we can go here to the sidebar and we can see if this node has been linked somewhere. We can go to Vesna, for instance, and we know that Vesna has appeared in episode one, in the article of Fanir, in the get help from Darkwell plotline, and on the starting node. And if you want to get even more structure about how your notes are linked, you can go here to the left part and open the graph view. And here you see a graph of all your notes and how they are linked. In my case, for instance, I can see that in episode 3, the NPCs that appear are Racina, Fanir and Inula, and the locations that appear are Whitebridge and Darkwell. This view makes it extremely easy to track what happens in your game and how the different characters, locations, episodes and sessions connect to each other. But there are also even cooler things because Obsidian has a very robust plugin system in which people can develop their own plugins using JavaScript. So for instance, you, we can use Leaflet, which is a JavaScript library for maps, which allows us to have interactive maps, Google map style, in our vaults, in which we can place pins, so you can even track how your character is advancing through the adventure using the maps that you do somewhere else. Another extremely useful plugin is called DataView, and it allows you to list things that are in folders, for instance. The simplest example that I can show you is here in this page. I've got a list here of all of my episodes, but I didn't write this text manually. I just have here DataView, list from sessions. And that's it. This is extremely useful when we are playing with Mythic because we can go to our lists folder and our characters list is updated on its own when we add new people to the characters folder. And the same thing happens, of course, if we add new threads to the threads folder. This allows us not only to have, well, just name of the mission or the thread, but to have a note linked to it in which we can explain what's the objective, write down milestones, progress tracks if you're using iron zone, basically whatever you want. In short, I think that Obsidian right now is the best over you can use to take notes in your solo games. It is free and it is available cross-platform, uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, Android and iOS, so you can have all of your notes and your games wherever you go. I, I must admit I, I'm honestly in love with this software. I've started also using it to organize my life, basically. And that leads me to my last bonus, which was using my generators or oracles inside the software itself. For this, there are several options. If you have the time and the knowledge, you could do a plugin for Obsidian using JavaScript, in which you included the generators and the oracles. But that would be costly and it would be depending on the platform. I found through the Obsidian community a better solution, which is called the Text Expander. Well, the name is Espanso, as I said, and it is basically a text expander. I'm going to show you now how it works. Espanso basically works with rules like this one, with matches, as it calls it. You define triggers, which are the keywords that you have to write to replace them by something else. So, for instance, if we open a new file and we write Espanso, it changes it by hi there. This is good, this is nice, but it's nothing revolutionary. 
but it becomes much more interesting when you discover that it also allows you with any trigger to launch whatever script you want. So if you know that I have a library full of scripts of generators and oracles, it's just a matter of, well, writing the matches, which I'm going to show you right now. And here, for instance, we can see that I've coded the fade check from Mythic Variations 2. And if I write colon fc0, span so then launches an R script, because I'm using R, you could use whatever language you want, and it calls this script fc0. So let's see how that works. If we go back to Obsidian, let's say that I'm here, I'm writing my new scene, and then I want to roll a fade check. Well, we can do it right here, colon fc0. And there it is. It's completely non-intrusive, it's super fast, and it allows you to keep playing just focus on a single environment. You don't have to all tab, you don't have to go to your PDFs, you don't have to roll dice, you can just play. Of course, you can also have functions for dice rolling. Let's roll 1d10. And just as an overview, here you can see all of the scripts that I have defined. Uh, I've, I've, I've basically coded most of Mythic Variations too dice rolling, and uh, just to show you something that is a bit more complex than just uh, simple checks, since with programming you can do whatever you want, here I've got two functions for NPCs, one which is what you see when you're approaching one, and the other, the NPC profile, what I have to know as GM to know how to interpret or how to roleplay an NPC, and I can show you how they look like right now. The first one will be the appearance, and very quickly I get all of the description from an NPC that I would require to have a very complete mental picture of how they look. And again, I didn't have to switch from Obsidian at any moment. Lastly, before I finish, I wanted to show you a glimpse of another vault that I have in which I am playing Curse of Strat, the 5e adventure. And I wanted to do so because I wanted to show you this plugin. It's called Admonition, and it allows you to include text box like this with different colors, different categories, which can be collapsed. So it is very easy to include different kinds of voices in your markdown files, separating, for instance, mechanics, GM emulation, personal comments, or NPC-related stuff. You don't have to do this, of course, you, you can do just pure text, but if you want to have more separation or write specific kinds of information in a different way, you can do it through Obsidian. And that's it. That's the summary of how I play my games right now. If you would be interested in having more information about this, um, how I organize my vaults, how to set up the Espanso scripts, which plugins I like, anything, just drop by the Mythic Discord server, which you'll find a link in the description, and I'll be extremely happy to help you. As always, thank you for coming, thank you for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.